this is just the outline for the kids to, to see where they're going, is that? Yeah, and also I find that really useful for me too because it's probably easy for you to see in say the, the MS one, but once that gets filled up, you know, I refer to that, you know, if I'm teaching the course again in two years time, exactly. I'll refer to this and say, all right, the unit took 13 lessons and, you know, it's now mid-March, you know, am I up to, up to about the right place? To, um, you know, I mean, classes are different and you sometimes need more or less time with the topic, but... So as you start a unit, you just put your start date there, and as you finish it, you work that there and yeah. say how many. Oh, yeah. awesome! It's also um, like a bit of a registration, like you know, session type thing as well. Like um, cool, yeah. And then so this class is obviously going to year twelve, so that's why that's there. And then you've got some. Was this for the face to? Was this for normal? Were these for normal days? Yeah, that's for normal normal lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So then we go down to the actual work. So this is dated, and the topic. Yep. So topic. Yep. yep. Yep, so this is what we work covered, homework, right. So this is where the questions start. Yeah. So, and I understand how comments work. Who's put a line through the text? Is that you? Sure. So, um, yeah, normally me, but I encourage the kids to do as well. So the process is, you know, probably the next one down is a good example. So Charlie says he needs help with page 8, question 5E, and Ziggy says he needs help with that question. Um, I might respond with a comment. Maybe someone else will respond with a comment. And then once it's resolved, it gets crossed out. So um, it's like a you know almost to, to you know to do list of, of to give kids. So you instruct the kids, okay, when you when your issue has been resolved, click resolve, and then do the the cross I would, out. I actually I actually prefer them not to resolve them because like as a as a planning school for when I next next teach this to be able to see like all the problems, all the discussion, I actually find useful. So you actually see some of them where I've um, the kids have hit resolve, and I've sort of trained them not to. Um, but at the end of the term, I'll delete the table and then I'll archive it and then I'll make it a brand new table so it won't, um, you know, it doesn't get cluttered up, you know, over, over two years. So there's no problem about having too many comments here because once you once you highlight that comment thread yeah. appears and the rest is just hidden. That's so right. that's fantastic. So that's that's uh, the equivalent to, uh, well, it's a more specific chat thread than you can really get in a in in systems that have chat threads in a way. Yeah, we're really trying to encourage them to look up, like take care of each other. Like I just because you know Ollie is fantastic. Like he posts suggestions, and then um, but I really want to get more of them on board with that. And that's a that's a, you know that's the, my main main thing. I just I want to get them helping each other. You know, and I would I'll just get out of the way and then get on with it. Really. So if, if I was a student and I was having trouble with that, I would just highlight that, right click, and and I would, I would just write a comment, and then. And yeah. post it like that, yeah. but then if it's yeah. resolved, which you don't want them to resolve it, but I'm going to delete that because we don't want it yeah. in there. But that's that's how simple it is. If a kid's having trouble, I want them to actually type in that box. This is the question I'm having trouble with. If they um, want to then discuss that, then then the comment thread is what I'd suggest they use for it. But normally, the if oh, they have cool. a question, they don't put the question in a comment. Normally, the question question three they'll just write in the cell. Oh, so the kids are writing these. The, the kids write this in. Of course, they do. The, oh, yeah, so yeah, Lara's yeah. written that and Charlie's written that. Oh yeah, yeah, they've all got edit, edit access, yeah. Right. So how come that's the one chat thread? Is that related? Is that these two questions are related? Oh, they are one thirteen. So they both, both, they both had trouble with question seventeen. Yeah. So, so Charlie's just come in and tacked on the end of her, th uh, her, her highlight, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That is awesome, and that is so simple. So people with um. Who are struggling with? Well, I don't. I don't know if many people use Moodle anymore. God, that was a nightmare. But if there's something that's clunky, then they could just use this. Yeah, you know, I know that OneNote is really good. I don't use it myself. Uh, I don't really use Microsoft yeah. at all. But but if you quite don't know how to use it, use, quite a lot of my colleagues use OneNote. And the issue, like we were talking about it just last week, and how best you know with online learning to try and facilitate this sort of thing. And my issue with OneNote is just the notifications because, as you know, as you know, you can tag people into comments with a, um, you know, so easily in Google, but that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in OneNote yet. So this is actually That's, superior. Yeah, I'm a bit of a night owl, so I'm just a bit cautious about when I'm tagging people with comments. Normally, like there's one on the screen there at eleven fifteen p.m. I normally don't do that. Um, so um, certainly, just later I wouldn't. Um, yeah, so sometimes I will just comment and not notify, or I'll, or I'll comment and then edit, edit the next morning. So by notify, you're saying at uh, plus Darcy 
obviously you've got all their email addresses and then you're just sharing this you create the doc and then you share this specifically with each person you're not doing this as a uh, anyone with a link can view you're you're locking it down and it's it's just these kids who are in your class but you've got their email addresses and you're sharing this doc specifically with them so only you and them and then you've shared it with me so i can see it only us can yeah. see this you actually do it a little bit differently so um I've actually got it. Anyone with the link can view. Oh, you have. And, um, that's that's so I give can give the parents the address. So, like in in our learning management system, which is Moodle, which I'm as you said, like learning management systems are so clunky compared to this. Yeah. So all I all I do is I just set it up this way. Share the anyone the link can view. Give the parents the link. So if the parents want to see what we're doing in class each day and what the homework is, it's yeah. all available to them as well. Yeah. And then that just goes in the LMS and because the parents don't have you know school logins, um, to, like they don't have a school login for a Google account to be able to be authenticated. So yeah. so you're sharing this with anyone with a link can view as well as specifically to the, your students. Yes, that's right. Different, different levels different levels of access. So anyone with a link can view. Um, my students have edit access. The other teachers on the course have edit access. And just today, for example, um, because, you know, the, the whole online thing, the other class at this level, the other year the advanced class, I've just given them comment access like yours. Yes, so yes. I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want to be the first point of call for their questions, but they can see my students questions and the comments now which is the you know the comments the best part of it so they can view they can view the page and view comments but they can't comment um actually i think they can comment like you did but um i'll try I'll, you know if i'm able to help them i will but i i want their teacher to be there first exactly to call their questions yeah yeah that's awesome um and so what about this? How are these other sheets any different, or are they just different examples of the same yeah, so sort of thing? Look, just different examples. So I think that I wanted to show you the MS twelve one because that's a course that's um, yeah, that one, yeah. So that's just an example of how I use it for. Let's just go back to the top. Sorry, just for um, uh, like almost registration type purposes. So number of lessons, my notes. So you know things that need to be split into other topics, things I didn't like. Um, like on the um comment there for um. On the twenty first of February, I've got you know stuff I need to add into the notes. So I'm also all, always using this as a um, like registration type thing and you know evaluation of, the, of things as well. So the kids aren't really interested in that, but you know. So this isn't yeah. for the kids. This is for your own admin, really. Yeah, yeah but then, then the rest of the rest of the documents are the same. But there's less collaboration with comments. Happening yeah. In the, yeah, year eleven IT one is just a little bit different in that um, that's you know if you were to print it's about forty pages long. So, table um if you keep going down is um like with that course often we try and do a divide and conquer with different silvers i'll test the photos at the bottom but um we try and do um there's a bit of fun at the bottom um but we try and do uh divide and conquer with silver stop points so so this like that area there like we just um had an activity where they had to you know each research you know one particular item and then they just throw it into this document it's just such an you know, this is only one document we use for any collaboration, and at the end of the term, I'll just clear it out and we'll start fresh. Wow, wow. The thing I get with Google and Google Docs, it's not sexy. It doesn't look good. It's not like a Mac product or, or, or something with lots of bells and whistles. But because of the way they've set it up, anyone who's got some creativity can just use it so powerfully, can they? Yeah. 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 Wow, that's awesome. That's yep. fantastic. Um, for running a class, it's, you know, I don't, I don't use a lesson all like I don't have a daily planner anymore. You know, like all my lesson planning straight into the Google Doc. You know, the kids can see what's coming up in advance. They can work ahead if they, you know, if they want to with homework. Um, but hang on. So, do your kids have devices every lesson with, without access problems? Uh, yeah. So I'm in a independent school. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty, well, pretty well resourced, so I'm very lucky. Kids are fantastic. You know, there's no issue with giving them edit access to a document like but this. No one's going to trash it or anything like that. If you were in a school where kids didn't have, or it was a hassle to get logged on, so you basically didn't have the kids accessing uh, during a lesson necessarily, but you could still, you could have this, you could almost print it out, but they can have access at home, so when they get stuck at homework, they could be doing your comment thing that you do here or on the other, on the other example. That could yeah. still work out of out of lesson time, and and you've got some sort of paper copy, or you shine it on the wall, or something for yeah. in class, couldn't you? For sure. So, like with the maths classes, I mean, one of the, one of the things at the top is the, the captain's list. So, I mean, their their role it's different in the um, IT class, but for the maths classes, the um, 
know, the computer captain comes into the classroom before I get there, logs into the computer, puts up the Google Doc, highlights the day, because you might have noticed the current day is in bright yellow, so it's very, very easy to spot. So I don't, I don't have to manage any of that, so the kids just take care of it. And sure. um, Yeah, so the computer captain looks after all that for me, so it's just... So when I walk into the room, it's up on the on the board already, or on the on the screen already, and that's you don't need to have devices in the class to be able to do that because you know you've got a, a we've got a computer in the room which connects to the the TV or the data project. Um, even if no one has a device in the room, you can still have this displayed at the front of the room, and it, it keeps me on track during the lessons. You know, you got the dog points this is what we're doing first, this is what we're doing second, and it just you know everyone knows what's going on. Okay, and you you don't need your own devices to do it. That's fantastic. The thing is, you don't know what you don't know. And teachers in this space, there's a lot they don't know that they don't know. And yeah. so, which is why I created my little video. But this one's yeah. this one's a whole other level. See, I'm, I've been saying to people, say, oh, yeah, go go one night. Well, now I'm going to say, well, no, stick to Google Docs. Check this video out, right? Thanks so much. Hey, that's all, that's all great. Okay, hey, thanks a lot, Andrew. That's okay. awesome. All right, nice, no, Richard. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, um, cheers. Have, have a great day. No worries. Thanks. thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, see you. Bye.